guys, this video is a long time coming. I did promise this Phantom Knight's deck profile quite a while ago. To be honest, I have just been quite lazy, uh, especially over the holiday season, but I really wanted to put this out there because I've been playtesting this deck quite a lot and it is super fun to play still. So let's just jump straight into it, shall we? Uh, starting with the main deck, of course, and with the PK monsters, we got three of the Phantom Knights of Torn Scales, three of the Phantom Knights of Silent Boots, two of the Phantom Knights of Ancient Cloak, two of the Phantom Knights of Ragged Gloves, and one of the Phantom Knights of Stained Grease. So these monsters have quite a, a lot of effects. Some activate from the hand or on the field, and they all have effects that activate while in the graveyard. So starting with Torn Scales here, while it's on the field, you can discard a card to send any Phantom Knights card from your deck to your graveyard. Also, while it's in the graveyard, if you banish another Phantom Knights card, uh, you can special summon this monster, but banish it when it leaves the field. With Sun and Boots, you can special summon it from your hand if you control another Phantom Knights monster. It's graveyard effect, you can banish it to add a Phantom Knight spell or trap from your deck to your hand. Usually you'll be adding things like the Phantom Knights of Fogblade, or the rank up magic if you do play that in your own build, but I'm not playing that in my own build. With Ancient Cloak, while it's on the field in face up attack position, you can change it to face up defense. Uh, target a monster first, of course. A dark monster has got to be as well. Target that, switch it to defense, and that monster gains 800 attack. This is pretty good to use on Rusty Bardish, but I'll go more into that later on. It's graveyard effect, you can banish it to add a Phantom Knight's monster from your deck to hand. Usually you'll be either adding the Stained Greaves or Silent Boots, usually the Stained Greaves there. And next up, we're going into the Ragged Gloves. It doesn't have an on-field or hand effect, but if you XCs with this monster, that XCs monster will gain 1000 additional attack. It does have a really good graveyard effect where you can send a Phantom Knight's card from your deck to the graveyard so you can send fog blade or even the torn scales but you can't activate the torn scales because the torn scales needs to be in the graveyard for it to special summon itself so just be careful of that stain greaves is a really good one as well you can special summon it from your hand if a phantom knight is special summoned so the usual combo is you'll want these two ancient cloak and torn scales in your graveyard you banish the ancient cloak to search the stained greaves after resolution, the Torn Scales will special summon itself from the graveyard. Then, because a Phantom Knight is special summon, you summon the Stained Greaves. And you've got two level 3 monsters that you can use for an Xyz or Link summon. Probably better to use them for Xyz, otherwise the Torn Scales will get banished. Stained Greaves has a graveyard effect where you can banish it from your graveyard to special summon one Phantom Knight's monster from your hand. And increase its level by one, which can be important and I'll go into that a little bit later. Going off into some of the extenders in the deck, I'm playing three Kagamusha Knight. When you normal summon a level three monster, you get to special summon this from your hand. Also playing one of the Junk Forward. If you control no monsters, you can special summon this monster from your hand. So it's a great way if you've only got, say, a Junk Forward and Ancient Cloak to go into a Cherubini. But I'll go into some more combos later. We're playing two Danger Monsters, one Jackalope and one Suchinoko, both level 3 easy to summon monsters. And we're also playing the very small BA package, one Seer, one Graph. Finally, the last two extenders are Psychic Wielder and Tracker, being special summonable monsters as long as you control a level 3 monster. So going into some of the hand traps now, um, these, this is kind of a weird ratio. I feel like you can get away with quite a few hand traps in this deck and it's quite important that they are all level 3 so I'm just going to show all the ghost skills and I'll go over to the reasons why. Ash Blossom Joy Spring, good generic hand trap. Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion stops a lot of the meta relevant decks at the moment and Ghost Ogre can be pretty good against Zodiac specifically. They're all level 3 which is quite important so if you open two of these and say like any of your extenders you're still able to make some sort of play so these are really good cards i like to play for hand traps uh finally i am playing the dragoon package Oop, that's not a dragoon <laughs> uh the dragoon package which is one dark magician red ice black dragon and red ice fusion because you can very easily make verte in this deck and just 
get this a little bit better so you can see some of the cards still. I think I'm going to have to like just grab all of these just to go into the spells and traps because there are still quite a few spells and traps that I do play in this deck. Going into the spells and traps, we play one called by the grave because we don't want our plays to be hand trapped, especially by a Skullmeister or Ghost Ogre because they seem more meta relevant play at the moment. So it's a really good card to stop those. One Foolish Burial, just a really good extender as well as Monster Reborn. I can't swear by this card enough. It's so good for if you got really bricky hands. It's always seemed to help me out whenever I've drawn it. I had my hands been a total brick. This card has really saved me. Also, both of these are lost off promo, so swag. <laughs> um, last spell we're playing is Reinforcement of the Army. The majority of monsters that we do play in this deck are warriors, so you can usually bait out something with this. But usually your opponent won't negate this with Ash, um, so it's a really good card anyway. Finally, into the traps we're playing, Free of the Fog Blade and One Shade Brigadine. I like Shade Brigadine because I can actually make Time Thief redo it in this deck and I'll go over a little combo for that later on. With that, that's the main deck complete, let's go into the extra deck. Okay, going into the extra deck, you can change these two cards here for cards such as Axis Code Talker or Boral Sword, but I really do like these two cards for OTK in with. Also, I'm playing the playmat and I've got the field center somewhere. Where have I put that? There it is. <laughs> so I've got to play these two cards. I really like Arc Rebellion as a uh, big bungus that you can make. Playing two of the Phantom Knights Breaksword, you've got to play at least one within this deck. Really good removal card and something good that you can use to go into the Raiders Knight with. Also playing one Divine Arsenal 80 Zeus. It's kind of a bit of a pricey card. You could probably swap this for Boral Sword because it is a much cheaper card than it is now, but it's still a lot cheaper than Axis Code Talker. Uh, finally, to round off the XCs, one Time Thief Redo, which I did mention, and one Levier the Sky Dragon, or Sea Dragon even. Don't know why I said Sky, because it wind attribute, but anyway, um, really good combos with this card. I kind of feel like I should bump this up to two, but the extra deck is quite tight already. Going into the Link Monsters and playing one Appaloosa Bow of the Goddess, something you can very easily make within this deck, with four materials as well. Uh, your Bread and Butter Link Monsters, one Cherubini and one Rusty Bardish, you can very easily make Bardish after sending, say, like Graf with the Cherubini, and it also dumps extra Phantom Knights cards. It's the bread and butter, as I said, of this extra deck. I'm playing one Phantom, uh, Phantom Knight, <laughs> Nightmare Phoenix. This card has really saved me in some awkward situations. I've had people shotgun, there can only be one as soon as I say, use the Shade Brigadine. So I'm stuck into that one warrior monster. And uh, to counteract this, I do play a Link Spider, but this is a proxy because I don't have Link Spider at the moment, apparently. So what I've done is special summon that Shade Brigadine. They flipped, there can only be one. I made the Link Spider, then normal summon the Torn Scales and use the Torn Scales and the Link Spider to make Nightmare Phoenix to get rid of the deck. Get rid of the deck and only be one. So Phoenix is a really good extra deck card to me and something I'll definitely keep playing. As well as Link Spider, it's a really great card for when you get in the beard halfway through your combo. You can still make Verte if you've got graveyard effects with it as well. Speaking of Verte, one Verte <laughs> for the Dragoon package and one Solomon Great Elm Mirage so that the Ancient Cloak and the Ragged Gloves aren't completely dead in your hand. Last extra deck card upside down is Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. Stupidly strong boss monster, can't be targeted, can't be destroyed by card effects, can negate something on your opponent's turn, blows up stuff uh, on your turn. Two monsters, if you use two non-effect monsters, stupidly good, strong, uh, extra deck monster along with AA Zeus. So with that, that's the extra deck. Let's go into the side deck. Within the side deck, you're gonna to want to play one Nibiru token because you'll always be Nibiru in this deck. But for the real side deck, we do play three Nibiru because there are still some combo decks out there. Three Lanciers just to deal with Virtual World and Dinos. Phantom Knights do have a really good matchup against Dinos, however, because a Fog Blade is a continuous. So. Yeah, it's, it's a good matchup, but Nancy is still a really good card for those other decks I mentioned. Uh, three Twin Twisters. Phantom Knights generally like to be in the graveyard, and you can send your 
Phantom Knights to the graveyard, as well as destroying two Spell and Tribe cards on the field. Something good against this meta because it is a control heavy meta with a lot of back row. Uh, speaking of back row and control metas, evenly matched, you can get rid of a lot of problematic uh, cards on the field with this, as well as like banishing Eld Lich cards. I am in two minds of trading this out for anti-spell fragrance. I'll probably do a bit more testing online and just remote duels just to see how anti-spell fragrance works within this deck. Finally, the one offs for the last three cards, one Dino Rest of Pancratops, Hoppy's Fever Duster and Red Reboot, mainly just for back row hate. So that was my Phantom Knights deck profile. I'll do a little quick test hand and combo guide after this but if there were anything that you would change about this deck feel free to leave that in the comments i really appreciate you guys for watching this and hope that my guide helped you and if it did please remember to leave this video a like and consider subscribing to my channel uh, for more deck profiles like this more in depth i'll also or i am also doing a sealed only challenge with charmers but i'm feeling i'm gonna maybe change that up and do something different from all the other Yugi tubes about that. So let's get straight into that combo, shall we? Okay, let's begin with the test hand. So I'm gonna draw a quick test hand of five cards. We're assuming we're going first and no negates from our opponent. This is a pretty good uh, hand besides this card, <laughs> which is quite unfortunate to draw the red eyes. So I'm gonna go a slightly different route with this, but we've got some really good hand traps in here as well. So I think I'm just gonna start off by normal summoning the Phantom Knights of Torn scale, using the effect to discard the Ragged Gloves and send one from our deck to Graveyard. With that, I'm probably gonna send the Ancient Cloak, makes the most sense, then use the Ancient Cloak effect, banishing itself to add the Silent Boots from our hand. Because we do control a Phantom Knights monster, I'm gonna summon the Silent Boots, then use both of these material, as, ma as material, sorry, for a true Bini Ebony Angel of the Burning Abyss. Next, I'm going to use the Chirubini's effect to send off the Graph, a Graph effect to summon the Seer. I'm going to use both of these monsters now to go into a Rusty and use the Seer effect to bring back Chirubini. I could very well make Appaloosa as well, so we'll just see how we go from here. Let's see. I'll go for the Ragged Gloves effect, Spansion itself to send a, whoops, Fog Blade. And because the Phantom Knight's card was banished, I will special summon the Torn Scales. Next, I'll use the Fog Blade effect, Spansion itself to special summon the Silence Boots, then overlay both of these monsters to go into a Levier. I'll use the Levier effect to special summon back the Ancient Cloak in face of attack position, detaching the Torn Scales. I'll use the Ancient Cloak effect targeting the Rusty to increase its attack by 800, making it a 2900 monster, which can be quite important in some situations. I think I can't really make the uh, Time Fee Free Doer, unfortunately, but I can make Appaloosa above the Goddess with free materials. And of course, because of the new counter rules, I'm just gonna show free counters on top of Appaloosa. So, fury material, Appaloosa's not too bad. And I just realized you can't really see anything in the EMZ, so I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit. So we do have a rusty effect as well. Since we have a banished Ragged Gloves and we may need some extra follow-up next turn, I'm gonna send another Ragged Gloves and set one Fog Blade. I'm also gonna use the effect of the Silent Boots in our graveyard, banishing itself to add another Fog Blade from our deck to our hand, and then set in that Fog Blade. So this is pretty much our end board. We do have two hand traps in the form of Ghost Ogre and Ghost Bell. We've got pretty much five monster negates, free from anywhere, 
and two on the field being the fog blades that we have set. So it's not too bad of a end board considering we opened the Red Highs Fusion. But uh, yeah, that was my little combo guide for you, just to give you an idea on how to play the deck. If you want to see me do a Get Good At series of this deck, remember to leave that in the comments and give this video a like. Uh, thanks for watching this video and I hope you, this guide helped you. Remember to subscribe if you want to see more guides like this and I'll see you in the next video. Till I try, I get the flag and fly it. When you see my new album, buy it. Producer MCLP, I supply it. Think of a vibe, then multiply it. By ten times, I cause a riot. How do you do that? That's amazing. It's real grand music that you're craving.